Hello guys, good afternoon. So we will be discussing in this lecture about the panoramic radiography, which is also known as orthopentomogram or panorex. So there are various names, even it is also called OPG. First of all, let's see why this name orthopentomogram. So ortho is straight, means we will be getting an x-ray where the three-dimensional uh, object, the face of the persons, the, it's the uh, structures over there, they would be on a straight film. Panoramic view, which is an unbroken view of the whole region surrounding an observer, just like the panoramic view from your camera. Well, tomography means the imaging through, a, through the human body or other solid object using the X-rays or ultrasound. Tomographic layer. Tomography means something which is derived from using layers to describe something. Or we can say in the medical tomography, tomography can be used to describe three-dimensional tissues such as organs, utilizing the images of several cross-sections, etc., etc., for diagnostic purposes. The general principles of the panoramic imaging. There is a focal trough in the tomogram which we can say it's a plane of acceptable details or image layer that is the plane that is not blurred on the radiograph. This is the focal trough. And the X-ray, it is moving in one direction. In the opposite direction, the film is going to move. So the objects are going to be uh, like uh, the images of the objects, they are going to be on the film as the film is going to move. Focal trough in a pentomogram. It's the width and thickness are governed by many factors. Objects lying within the focal spot are shown clearly and the objects which are lying outside, they are blurred or which they are not visible. A panoramic radiograph or pentomogram is produced using the curved surface tomography, like this. Rotational panoramic radiography is accomplished by rotating a narrow beam of radiation in the horizontal plane around an invisible pivot point axis position intraorally film and tube travel in the opposite directions around the patient and we get a panoramic view. So the client remains stationary as the X-ray tube and film cassette holder which are connected, they rotate around the patient or around the client. Well, in this technique, a vertical and narrow beam is used as compared with the larger either circular or rectangular beam which is being used in the conventional intraoral radiography. So depending upon the collimator, whether it is <coughs> a rectangular collimator or it is a round collimator, the beam would be either circular or it would be rectangular. But in uh, OPG or in Panorex, there will be vertical and narrow beam, vertical and narrow beam because of the collimator. The pivot point or X is we call it the rotational center or rotation center. The center of rotation changes as the film and tube head rotate which allows the image layer to confirm to the elliptical shape of the dental arches. Center of rotation. The film and tube head are connected and rotate simultaneously around a patient during exposure. The axis around which the film and x-ray tube rotate is termed as the center of rotation. Arches are not true arcs. Therefore, several centers of rotation are necessary to maintain the dental arches in the focal trough as the machine turns around the patient. So depending on the manufacturer, the number and location of the rotational center, they differ like it could be a single center rotation. It could be a double center rotation. It could be a triple center rotation or the like the modern machines, the sliding center or moving center rotation like this. 
So single center rotation. There was a doctor from Finland. His name was Y.V. Patero. He actually brought the concept of this pentomogram. And what he did he applied the principles of this curved surface tomography to relate to the circular tomography. He used a rotograph machine. We can see how he was taking the picture. This is the guy I was telling. This technique used the stationary rotation center of the beam placed at one side of the jaws. The rotation center is then shifted symmetrically by moving the patient. So the patient is moving. And the projection technique, it produced a split image well then comes the Two centers of rotation. In this technique, the individual left and right sides of the arc formed by the teeth and jaws closely form a part of a circle. A circle. The center of the rotation was positioned anteriorly to the location of the third molar opposite to the side being examined. So wherever the site is being like say for instance we are examining this site, so it will be on this side. When we will be examining this side, then it will be here. This double rotational principle was used in the Panorex machines. Then the triple center rotation. This system divided the arc of jaws into three areas, a condyle to first premolar posterior segment, well, a contralateral opposite segment, a canine to canine anterior segment. Canine to canine anterior segment. These three curved segments have three different centers. Two are bilaterally situated, slightly posterolateral to the third molars, and the third one is situated in the midline, posterior to the incisors. The X-ray beam can be shifted from one center to the other without any interruption, and continuous image can be made from one condyle to the other condyle. Sliding moving center rotation. In this me mechanism, the center of rotation changes as the film and tube head rotate around the patient. The rotational change allows the image layer to confirm to the elliptical shape of the dental arches. The location and number of the rotational centers influence the size and shape of the focal trunk. All the machines, they employ a moving rotational center that traces a path of shape of an eclipse. And that is why we also call it as ellipsopentomography. Panoramic imaging projection in the vertical plane. So the vertical dimensions, they are unaffected by the horizontal rotation. Vertical angulation would be same as the conventional intraoral projection. Slight negative angulation like passes beneath occipital area, we can see that from minus 4 to minus 7 degrees. Well, imaging in the like projection in the horizontal plane. Horizontal image is affected by horizontal rotation of the beam. The X rays they appear to diverge from intraoral source but really originate outside the of the client. The apparent intraoral source is called the center of rotation. Here we can see that. Projection in the horizontal plane. Moving X-ray. So you can get the true intraoral source and focus of projection. The effective focus of projection here. Uniform magnification in case of the true intraoral source and focus of projection. Whereas we can see that 
due to the rotational beam there will be some magnification or distorted image the film is stationary in this case projection in the horizontal plane we are discussing rotating beam and moving film the proportions are restored so if the beam and film both are moving the proportions would be restored discrepancy in horizontal and vertical magnification is eliminated by using a moving film to equalize the magnification in the horizontal dimension with the vertical and film moves in direction opposite to the horizontal rotation of the beam. Layer formation. Film placed on circular drum or a moving flat cassette, horizontal magnification is reduced to match the vertical magnification by adjusting speed of film in respect to projection of the beam. Film placed on the circular drum or a moving flat cassette. Horizontal magnification is reduced to match the vertical magnification by adjusting speed of film in respect to the projection of beam which we have already discussed. Vertical and horizontal dimensions they match only when the object lies within a particular plane which we call the central plane or sharply depicted plane of the image layer, the focal trough. So the image layer, which we call the focal trough, this is the area. It is a three-dimensional zone in which structures are reasonably well defined. It is a zone in an object defined as containing those object points depicted with the sufficient detail to be distinguished. It determines where dental arches must be positioned to achieve the clearest image. Objects in front of or behind this image layer are blurred because of their movement relative to the center of the film and the X-ray source. The image layer thicken thickness depends upon the effective projection radius and the width of the beam. The closer the rotation center of the teeth, narrower would be the focal trough. In most of the machines, the focal trough is narrow in the anterior region and would be wider in the posterior region. The objects which are outside this sharply depicted plane, they will appear distorted, fuzzy or usually they are not visible. So in a, a person who appears edentulous and you want to check whether there are some uh, retained Roots are there in the mandible at times using the OPG or Panorex radiography. We are not able to get the image of those roots and that is because they are not lying in the focal trough. Width of the image layer. It is determined by distance from the center of the rotation to central plane of image layer, width of the long narrow slit beam and the narrower the beam the wider would be the image layer. Position of the image layer. Changes in film speed alter the position of the image layer. Increased film speed, there will be like image, it will appear farther away from the rotation center. And if you decrease the film speed, image will appear closer to the rotation center. This is how the image layer is shaped to center the jaws interiors i told you they will appear narrower movement pattern of the x-ray beam movement pattern of the x-ray beam chosen to obtain a favorable projection of the jaws it depends on the manufacturer number and location of the rotational centers differ i told you earlier about that but nowadays most commonly continuously moving rotation centers are used Image layer analysis. Objects closest to the film will be narrowed, as I told you, and objects closest or toward the source will be widened. Buckle objects, they will be projected lower, whereas lingual objects projected will be higher. Objects in the center of the layer, they are magnified like 20 to 30%. 
less definition than an intraoral film definitely more horizontal than vertical magnification i have explained that to you as well all objects even those outside the focal turf are projected onto the film but most of these they are not visible objects with the greatest density are displaced in two places intended image and a ghost image well this is how the film in the cassette or the drum we can see this is a cassette this is the intensifying screen and this is the film well using the proper kilo voltage current and the time then what would be the dose to the patient we can see it over here like if it is kvp 75 and ma 15 for 15 seconds it will be 0 0.103 mr plus minus 0 0.008 and if it will be 80 kV, kvp with ma15 for 15 seconds so it will be 0.116 mr plus minus 0 0.008 that's how the uh, three-dimensional uh, structures in uh, human face they will appear on a flat screen in an opg indications of a panorex as a substitute for full mouth intraoral periodical radiographs, evaluation of trauma, evaluation of tooth development in the mixed dentition for children, orthodontic treatment, developmental anomalies, third molars, their position, and uh, like uh, if they are developing properly or not, will uh, there be a requirement for extraction in future, etc., etc. Large pathological lesions like cysts and tumors. Detection of fractures, generalized diseases, inability to tolerate the intraoral films, and assessment for surgical procedures. Contraindications panoramic film are not as defined or sharp as the images seen on intraoral films, so they are not going to be used, especially in endodontics, etc. etc. So, where we require fine anatomical details, we cannot use it, or in small carious lesions. We cannot detect those on OPGs, fine structures of the marginal periodontium, then periapical diseases, and for equal magnification as well. Here we can see the uh, anatomical landmarks which are visible on an OPG. So, like we can see the maxillary sinus, pterygomaxillary fissure, pterygoid plates, hamulus, zygomatic arch, articular eminence, zygomaticotemporal suture, then zygomatic process, external auditory meatus, mastoid process, middle cranial fossa, little border of the orbit, infraorbital ridge, infraorbital foramen, infraorbital canal, nasal fossa, nasal septum, anterior nasal spine, inferior concha, incisive foramen, heart palate, maxillary tuberosity, condyle, coronoid process, sigmoid notch then medial sigmoid depression then the uh, styloid process cervical vertebrae and cervical vertebrae they actually appear in a, like two places splitted then external oblique ridge mandibular canal mandibular foramen lingula mantle foramen then we can also see some mandibular gland fossa. We can also see the internal oblique ridge, mental fossa, mental ridge, genial tubercles, hyoid bone, tongue, soft palate, uvula, posterior pharyngeal wall, ear lobe, then glossopharyngeal ear space. Then we can also see nasopharyngeal ear space and platoglossal ear space. So over here on this radiograph, you can see different uh, anatomical uh, uh, parts of the area which we take the radiograph for using the OPG. And in board exams, usually the questions, they come on these and we have to identify. So that is why this X-ray is going to help you. This is the hyoid bone. Usually question comes on hyoid bone. And question also comes about these uh, heart palate. Yes, from here till here, it is all heart palate. Question also comes on the uh, this uh, innominate line, which we call the panoramic innominate line. 
This is the panoramic innominate line, and this is because of the infratemporal surface of the zygomatic bone. Uh, mandibular condyle, then the sigmoid notch, and we can also see the coronoid process. Uh, what else? Yeah, the in, uh, inferior alveolar canal. Then you can also see the mental foramen, inferior border of the mandible. As I told you about the uh, cervical spine, it will be having two shadows on both the sides. So here we can see a condyle, we can see the neck of the condyle, we can see the sigmoid notch, then the coronoid process. We can also see the coronoid process over here. And then we can see the remus, then the inferior alveolar canal, then we can see the angle of the mandible, then we can see body of the mandible, mental foramen, then the symphysis menti, and we can see the external oblique ridge external oblique ridge. Internal oblique ridge is also visible. So uh, surrounding uh, structures, the articular eminence is also visible. This is the articular eminence, then glenoid fossa. And we can also see the anterior arch of cervical uh, vertebra one, then a styloid process. This is the styloid process. Then we can see body of the second cervical vertebra and we can see the hyoid bone over here. Well, the real image is formed when the object is in between the center of rotation and the image receptor like this, the real image. And well, the coast image also forms because the uh, tube is rotating and the film is rotating. So ghost image, this is a radio opaque artifact is seen on the OPG film. Ghost image is formed when object is between the source and the center of rotation like this. It is produced when a radio dense object is penetrated twice by the X-ray beam. It could be a jewelry item or some anatomical structure projected on the opposite side of the patient. It resembles its real counterpart and has same morphology, but it would appear larger than the real counterpart, especially in the horizontal dimension, and is, that would be severely magnified, whereas the vertical component is not as severely magnified. Like over here, we can see these are the real images of the jewelry item, and now we can see this one is projected over here in the opposite area and will be slightly higher. It will be slightly higher than its original position. So this is the ghost image of this one. Ghost images also appear, but in the opposite direction. This is the ghost image of the mandible from here, and this is the ghost image of the mandible from here. Well, soft tissues, they also appear on the OPG. And what are these? Like using this edentulous arch, it will be easier to find out, like the inferior nasal concha, inferior nasal meatus, then middle meatus, dorsum. Of, this is whole dorsum of the tongue, this whole area. Then this is the ghost image of the opposite mandible. This is the soft palate. And this is the posterior wall of the pharynx posterior wall of the pharynx, this area, this area. This is the tongue. This is the dorsum. This is the upper lip and this is the lower lip. Well, some of the calcifications, they are also visible on an OPG. And what are these? You would be able to see the flibolets. These are the flibolets dark blue. Then you can see tritious cartilage and thyroid cartilage here. Then the calcified lymph nodes would also be visible. Then tonsillates. These are the tonsillates. Usually question comes that on an OPG where you can see the tonsillates or tonsil stones, they are visible on the remus. We think that tonsils will be visible somewhere here. No. They are visible on the remus. 
Then we can also see calcified atheromatous plaque here. And we can see an antrolith, the stone which is present in the maxillary antrum. Then ossified stylohyoid ligament. And we can see the silolith, submandibular and sublingual siloliths. Here we can see tonsil stones which are visible on the ramus. Then we can see the calcification of internal carotid artery. We can also see some radio opacity in the anterior region. It is nothing but just the mental protuberance. Well, this is how the mixed dentition, it will appear on the radiograph. Usually a question comes that they give you uh, some approximate age, like maybe seven years, that how many permanent teeth would be visible on an OPG or on, an, on a panorex. So, though they are not yet erupted, but you would be able to see uh, the premolars, you would be able to see the unerupted second molars, so usually like say for instance if they will ask you about an eight year old or eight and a half year old normal person with normal development so we will be able to see 28 teeth at least permanent teeth mucus retention pseudocyst of maxillary sinus it will appear in a dome shape it will appear a dome-shaped cyst and it will be radiopaque. Usually it is an accidental finding. Fractures of the mandible can easily be seen on an OPG. Well, for TMJ, the uh, panorex is not a very uh, useful aid, uh, diagnostic aid, we can say. Well, uh, you can only see the shape of the condyles, you can see the shape of the glenoid fossa, but discs are not visible. Yes, the disc, is the uh, um, joint spaces can be seen. That's it. Principles of description and localization of the bony lesions affecting the jaws. Relative radio, uh, radio density and internal structure of the lesion, the relative radio lucency or radio opacity of the lesion compared to the surrounding bone. Size and location of the lesion. The size and the location of the lesion in relation to the adjacent teeth and anatomic structures provide significant information about the type of the underlying condition. Shape of the lesion. The shape of the lesion can provide information about the degree and the rate of the development of the lesion. And then borders of the lesion, the borders of the lesion provide information about the slow or rapid growing of the pathological condition and may help in many cases to differentiate between the benign and the malignant lesions. Then effect on the surrounding bone, the features that should be examined are alterations in size and distribution of the trabeculation existence or not of sclerotic bone ring. Then effects on the bony cortex. The effects on the of the lesion on the bony plates of the jaws, like whether it, the lesion is expensile, it's just causing thinning of the cortex, or it has eroded the cortex, or maybe the cortex is perforated. Well, if, effects on the adjacent structure, especially the teeth, there may be evidence of some root resorption or displacement or delayed eruption or maybe loss of the lamina dura. Then periosteal reaction, the relation of the lesion to possible periosteal re reaction, whether lamellar, sunburst, or onion skin, or hair on end, etc., etc. Now we will see a normal panoramic radiograph. This is a normal panoramic radiograph. Well, over here, the patient is placed way too close to the source. So the uh, cervical spine will appear overlapping the ramus like this and uh, the anterior teeth they will appear blurred well patient if they are placed too far away from the source so what is going to happen the cervical spine is not going to be visible on the x-ray and secondly uh, what is going to happen the condyles they will be pushed to outside of the film 
could be possible and there will be blurring and widening of the anterior teeth well if patient's chin is tilted downwards then this type of smiley face type of appearance will appear and apart from that condyles placed high on the film and streaking of the hyoid bone would be over the mandible it will be over the mandible if like this you can see hyoid bone over the mandible and if patient's uh, chin is tilted upwards so a sad appearance type of or reverse smile you can call it it will be visible like that the arch will appear like that so over here we are done with our this lecture and soon i will come with cbct ct scan and mri how it's being used in dentistry thank